Delegates, we'll now resume the moderated caucus. Are there any points of information? A delegate of Germany. Um, the delegate of Germany would like to ask the de uh, a question to the delegate of Zimbabwe, who's not present. Delegate All right, Jim when uh, the delegate will be present, that time the delegate can pose his question. Uh, delegate of Cambodia. Thousands of teachers protested against the educational reforms in Hungary, complaining about the lack of materials and the education system itself. Hungary is investing its money in building fences against refugees, while such teachers and students suffer. What is Hungary's response to this? Can we please maintain decorum in the floor? Thank you, yes. Delegate, the question has been posed to. Yes, delegate of Hungary. Hungary is aware of the fact that um, there has to be uh, reforms of the educational system in Hungary. However, we have put certain, uh, we have fixed this and provided teachers with teaching uh, resources and requirements as well as have funded for the educational needs that are needed for, to improve our education system. Delegate of Italy. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. The Delegate of Italy would like to, delegate, uh, to question the Delegate of India on their previous comments. The Delegate of India said that India will educate its people. Yes, India will and has educated its people, but there aren't nearly enough jobs for these people who are being educated. India has a population of uh, around over one billion people, and almost every educated person that they have uh, the ratio of availability of jobs to number of educated people is, uh, there's a huge gap between it. And this results in there being more people asking for one job, as in there's more number of candidates for one job than there normally should be. What does the delegate of India have to comment on this? Uh, could the question please be more concise? Delegate, um, could you rephrase your question please? Uh, apologies, delegate of India. Uh, the delegate of Italy would like to uh, point out that the number of jobs in India and the number of people applying for those jobs, the ratio, the difference between them is too high. So there are more, ma many more candidates for one job than there normally should be. Uh, does the delegate of India feel that India has failed in creating availability for these jobs? Or, uh, and what does the delegate of India have to say on this? Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, this is a Delegate, please first be recognized by the chair. Yes, Delegate of India. This is a blatant, uh, this is blatantly blaming India for the nitty gritties. What we have done is tried our best to educate the mass. Uh, the Delegate of India doesn't see how the lack of jobs equates to denial of right of education. Delegate of Germany. The delegate of Germany would like to point out the ignorance shown by the delegate of India in this committee by completely absconding from the points of, by completely absconding from the points of, uh, first of all, uh, tackling corruption, second, creating job employment, and third, uh, this, uh, both of these points directly relate to the lack of education and the lack of educational facilities that the government is uh, providing. And thus, the delegate of Germany would like to ask the delegate of India as to how the government plans to tackle these major issues that ripple, that cripple the uh, entire education system of the country. The delegate of India can answer these in notes as uh, the issues have been discussed enough and about of India, so we are going to move on. Uh, delegate of Japan. The delegate of Japan would like to, po to pose a question to the delegate of Afghanistan. International and government donor efforts since 2001 to educate girls have significantly faltered. Only 37% of adolescent girls are literate. A third of girls marry at 18 and once engaged are compelled to drop out of school. Furthermore, with the control of Taliban, about 40% of Afghan districts are banned and limited to any form of education. My question is, my, the question of the delegate is, apologies, why hasn't there anything significant that's been done to at least combat the right of individuals to even at least provide an ordinary form of education? Thank you. 
delegate of Afghanistan. The education crisis in Afghanistan have improved from 2000 uh, to current situation, as 37 of school students are girls, as it was 9.2 from the uh, beginning. And um, the government now spends 12.51% uh, of the total expenditure on education, uh, which might seem small, but only to those who don't consider hazardous internal conflicts in Afghanistan. Right to follow up. Oh, yes, Delegate of Japan. The Delegate of Afghanistan has stated that 12.1% are being spent on education. But the question is, is this for men or for women? Thank you. Yes, Delegate of Afghanistan, would you like to? Delegates, please rise for the Secretary General. We have an emergency crisis. A bomb blast has just been reported in the Italian town near the French borders. Casualties were reported among refugees who hail from Afghanistan, Syria, and Eritrea. So far, the casualties are reported to be 20 deaths, 30 severely injured, and five missing. Eyewitnesses report that French authorities have increased patrolling near their borders. They, they also reported their belief that French authorities were responsible for the bomb blasts in order to avoid incursions by refu refugees into France. We will now be moving automatically into a moderated caucus to discuss the emergency crisis. Delegate of Italy. Uh, the delegate of Italy would like to call upon all nations not to uh, blame Point either. Of personal privilege? Yes. Can the Secretary General please repeat the emergency crisis and a little more slower? A bomb blast has just been reported in the Italian town near the French borders. Casualties were reported among refugees who hail from Afghanistan, Syria, and Eritrea. So far, the casualties are reported to be 20 deaths, 30 severely injured, and five missing. Eyewitnesses report that French authorities have increased patrolling near their borders. They also reported their belief that the French authorities were responsible for the bomb blasts in, in order to avoid incursions by refugees in France. We will now be moving automatically into moderated caucus to discuss this, and we hope that um, solutions come up for the same. Thank you. Um, delegate of Italy, you may resume. Uh, the delegate of Italy would like to call upon all the House of Nations not to attack either Italy or France, because these allegations that uh, France planted the bomb blast have not been proven yet. Italy and France will jointly uh, begin an investigation on uh, the, the cause, the origin of the bomb, and um, every other bit of relevant information to uh, this bombing. Thank you. Delegate of Zimbabwe. Uh, the delegate of Italy has mentioned how they should start an investigation. However, due to the fact that France and Italy themselves are part of the suspect list, did the delegate just announce that they're going to investigate themselves? Delegate of Italy. Um, the, delegate, uh, the delegations of Italy and France would like to start an investigation. However, they will e encourage uh, other countries as well to send experts that could be uh, from forensic de departments or other uh, military-related departments, as this has been the killing of people, and Italy would not view people as citizens of any country. However, we will view it as Humanity. A person has died, no matter what nationality, and we would encourage every country to uh, send in investigators so we can reach a conclusion at uh, the earliest possible time. Delegate of France. Thanking the delegate of Italy for all those points, but France can speak for itself. Uh, France would like to state that um, at first, we have to uh, consider the victims of this attack, and France has this uh, specific victim compensation scheme that will ensure that the f uh, families are not affected by this, and will, uh, France is willing to um, 
give its military and any sources required to ensure that these, uh, ref uh, these victims are um, rescued. Delegate of Egypt. The delegate of Egypt would like to point out that it's extremely unlikely that a sovereign government like France would do such an act to attack other uh, citizens, uh, other uh, residents in Italy, which is on a different country. And furthermore, delegate of it, uh, Egypt would like to rather suggest that this might be a possibility of a terror attack because recently, around uh, within this month, a white nationalist attempted to kill multiple refugees in the southern Italian in a southern Italian town using guns. So this could be a related incident as opposed to the rather wild. Uh, su suspicion that a foreign government might do such a thing on Italy's soil. Uh, delegate of uh, Ukraine. Um, the delegate of Ukraine would like to address the delegate of Egypt to clarify the misunderstanding that um, the bomb was not in France, it was in fact in Italy, near the French borders. And uh, perhaps this could be a scheme in order to avoid refugees since earlier um, stated, France does not exactly want as many refugees as um, they would like to have. The delegate, uh, delegate of um, Hungary. Thank you, Chair. Is the delegate of Ukraine assuming that France is trying to kill refugees? Delegate of Ukraine. Um, the delegate of Ukraine was just merely stating what the Secretary General has said. I was not, the delegate of Ukraine was not making any assumptions or saying anything. Delegate of Syria. To begin by stating the fact that we have found uh, numerous instances where the delegates present here in the committee are suspecting or doubting the reports given by the Secretary General, but please keep in mind the fact that all reports given by the Secretary General is verified, and therefore there is no question of suspecting it. Secondly, um, while the committee is still discussing on rescuing and helping people who have been injured, the committee has completely ignored the fact that five individuals are missing and we still don't know the stake of those people, and therefore the committee must stream its focus towards finding these five people because every life is precious. Thank you. Delegate of the United States. To begin with, the delegate of the United States would like to offer its condolences to uh, Eritrea, Afghanistan, and Syria, as well as Italy for the trauma that it may be going through. Furthermore, uh, the delegate of um, the United States of America would like to question the, the delegation of France because they said that uh, they have a uh, they have a funding program for the families of the uh, people who have passed away, and they quote and they stated, and to quote, families will not be affected once they have been paid or provided rep repatriation. However, the United States does not believe this is the best way possible to achieve transitional justice, which is why they would like to discuss with the rest of the international community what method would be best to facilitate the families of those that have died and to provide feasible measures for those that are currently injured or missing. Delegate of France. Uh, noting the point stated by the delegate of USA, uh, France would like to say that um, France has many other acts, such as the Anti-Terrorism Act, which will ensure that um, any of these suspected will have their assets frozen. And since considering how France is being accused, uh, France would like to rem uh, remind the delegate of um, Syria that the, uh, the Secretary General herself had uh, told that these were allegations and not confirmed. So making such wild accusations against a country in a diplomatic uh, platform does not seem the right way to go about it. Delegate of Japan. The Delegate of Japan is calling out to all other uh, participants of the G7 countries in order to provide financial aid for those who are in need at the moment. And also, Japan will be communicating with all intelligence agencies in order to gain leverage and significant advantage towards this situation. Thank you. Delegate of uh, Russia. 
Thank you, Honorable Chair, for finally recognizing the de delegate of Russia. Would like to call our first question to the delegates of Afghanistan, Eritrea, and Syria, the affected countries, as to how are they providing help to the Italy uh, to um, to solve this problem and to help the refugee, their citizens that were affected. Delegate of Italy. Uh, thank you to. Uh, the delegates of the United States, Syria, and Russia for their comments. Uh, Italy would like to state that it will uh, begin a thorough examination of all uh, possibilities that could have been the cause of this bombing. It will also begin search operations to try and find uh, the five missing people, as uh, suggested by the delegate of Syria. Thank you for that, delegate. And uh, it would also like to ask the delegates of all countries whose citizens were involved in this to um, Please send all possible help to Italy because we intend to solve this as a team, not as one country alone. Thank you. Delegate of Argentina, you've been recognized. Um, if France uh, says that they have no relation with the um, attack, why would, ha why would they offer uh, um, a fund and put a strain on their economy even though they have literally right now with their... Um, accusation that they have no relation with it as the attack was on Italian soil and the three uh, countries where the p uh, refugees were um, in the attack have no relation with France. I believe that the plan of funding actually verifies the accusations given to them. Yes, Delegate of Italy. Has the Delegate of Argentina never heard of the word humanity? It, uh, France could very well be providing aid as a part of humanity, and uh, all the three countries in relation will have to come together to work with every country uh, whatsoever to come to a solution to this crisis, as pointed out previously by the delegate of Italy. Uh, the delegate of Italy would prefer Argentina not questioning any country willing to help, because all countries delegate, have been please rise to the Secretary General. Please take your seats. We have an update. Shooting, delegates, please take notes. Shooting has been reported on the border of Germany and Czech Republic. 15 refugees inju injured and 10 missing. A video recording of a Czech police officer attacking one of the missing refugees has gone viral. BBC and CNN are repu re reporting huge protests by human rights organizations all over the world. Please continue the debate. Delegate of United Kingdom. Um, point of order. The delegate of Italy was already recognized before the Secretary General's entrance. Is the delegate, delegate now that there's been an update, we will choose another speaker if that's okay. Thank you. Uh, the delegate of United Kingdom believes that our immediate effort should be towards conducting search and rescue operations and hospitalizing those injured. Uh, and also uh, the need to form a UN task force so as to investigate these uh, controversial cases and uh, find out the uh, true per perpetrators. Thank you, Delegate. Delegate of Japan. The Delegate of Japan would like to reiterate that Japan, as a part of the, uh, as a part, a, a huge part of the humanitarian aid, will provide non-military, non-combatant military officers in order to um, uh, provide assistance to those who are. Uh, in search and uh, rescue operation, as well as to provide aid for those who are um, uh, injured at the moment. Thank you. As uh, delegate of Italy. A Czech police officer. Delegate of UAE, you've been recognized. The delegate of the United Arab Emirates would like to bring up the topic of the um, 15 missing refugees overall. Um, the delegate would like to question whether they're simply caught up in the, the bombing and the shooting or whether there's an ulterior motive to them being missing. Delegate of Czech Republic, would you like to comment on the, on the situation since it concerns? Yes, please go ahead. 
Oh wait, uh, does the delegate have to also answer the United Arab Emirates or just? Preferably, yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Seeing the situation currently, um, this is a culmination of what has been seen throughout the actual debate from the Moderate Caucus until now. The fact that the European Commission does not um, actually um, uh, have see, uh, have actually uh, propagated the flaws within the system that have now culminated in this um, crisis that is being seen. The Czech Republic government firmly affirms in its uh, protection of its borders um, um, any such allegations against the country stating that um, uh, the armed attacks against these refugees are simply due to xenophobia is simply not true. Um, the Czech Republic government will be issuing an actual report um, justifying the reasons, uh, the fact that these refugees are a part of the um, growing terrorism that is being seen within the country as well as the European Union. Delegate of Japan. Noticing the consecutive outlook of the situation, it may be possible that these are all a series of coordinated attacks. Um, the Delegate of Japan urges the congregation to entertain such theories to hinder further attacks and taking of lives. Thank you. We get up front. Throughout the moderated caucus, the Delegate of Czech Republic kept saying that they won't take in refugees because they fear terrorist attack. What if the refugees don't even want to come to Czech Republic because they fear terrorist attack by the police. Delegate of Czech Republic. Thank you, Honorable Dias. Um, the delegate is um, finds the la uh, finds the ignorance of the French uh, delegate to be concerning upon this issue. It's the fact that it's not um, the refugees fearing. Uh, the border control of the Czech Republic. It's, it's the uh, actual factors that these illegal, illegal immigrants and the influx of them, especially with the exacerbation of the smugglers as, as, uh, and the traffickers that um, continue to create this conflict between the, board, the border patrollers as well as the refugees that are innocent. Um, that's why the, um, the Czech Republic f um, continually tries to um, tell the European Commission, especially Germany and France, who continually state that the quota system needs to be addressed when they themselves don't understand that a lot of countries, especially Hungary and Czech Republic, the Eastern Bloc, do not have the um, financial stability and, and itself the confidence from the populations seen from the referendums that do, that do not want these refugees to be um, accepted because of the fact that the European Commission um, the state of the European Commission uh, is showing that they that that we cannot actually handle this crisis, and the delegate hopes that there's actual reforms in the Euro European Commission, especially with the quota system and the refugees distribution. Thank you, delegate. Query? Yes. Uh, who all were in, who all were involved in the shooting on on the border? Delegate, you're requested to pay attention when the crisis is being read. This is an emergency crisis. We don't have much time left. However, I will read the second update again. Uh, up, up, uh, apologies, the update. We have a second update. A bomb blast has been reported near Eiffel Towers, killing many tourists. French authorities have reported that among casualties, there are 15 French, six American, five five Finnish and eight Italian citizens. The bombers have escaped the French police. Meanwhile, the police in Hungary have received information that bombers have intercepted an aircraft that is bound to land in Hungary. Italian authorities have successfully captured the bomber bombers and interrogations and background research has revealed that they have come to Italy as Afghani refugees, but were operating with an insurgent group that attempts to destabilize Europe. They had also confided that they were not the only ones. Apologies, delegates. A bomb blast has been reported near Eiffel Towers, killing many tourists. French authorities have reported that among casualties, there are 15 French, six American, 
five Finnish, and eight Italian citizens. The bombers have escaped the French police. Meanwhile, the police in Hungary have received information that bombers have intercepted an aircraft that is bound to land in Hungary. Italian authorities have successfully captured the bombers, and interrogations and background research has revealed that they had come to Italy as Afghani refugees and were operating with an insurgent group that attempts to destabilize Europe. They had also confided that they were not the only ones, but many others had entered Europe in like manner. Delegate of Czech Republic. Thank you, honorable chairs. With this recent update, this confirms the actual arguments that have been raised from the Eastern Bloc with the fact that this refugee crisis is a facade that is being used by terrorists to foster and plant seeds of instability, instability within the European Union. Thus, um, the delegate of Czech Republic actually commends the initiative and action by the Italian um, government in actually being able to successfully capture and getting the information for, for this, the intel. And the Czech Republic for, um, would like to lay out um, the actual reformation of the current refugee um, system within the European Commission, as well as the actual investigations that are being done with the French government and Italian. Thank, Thank you, you, Delegate. Delegate of Russia, you've been recognized. <laughs> Delegate of Russia commends the performance of the Italian government, but at the same time would like to question, uh, would like to question the process of uh, Italy that they adopt to uh, grant the refugee status, since we have learned that Afghani refugees have entered Italy in, uh, who are actually Afghani terrorists. And the, it, doesn't this show the incapability of the government in screening out uh, uh, say, uh, screening out asylum seekers for refugee status. Delegate of Germany, you've been recognized. The delegate of Germany would like to begin by say, uh, by expressing its condolences to the initial attacks. Um, being a safe, uh, be, uh, Germany being um, a, a primary safeguarder of uh, refugees entering the European Union, Germany would like to extend its uh, extend its help and uh, would like to state that the help is in twofold. The first, uh, the first will of course be uh, the first will of course be initiating uh, initiating uh, an investigation to find out the root cause of one the sh the shooting that happened uh, on the borders and. Um, and uh, second, about the entire bomb blast done apparently by the French government on, in uh, near the Italian near the Italian uh, borders, and the second will be uh, promoting any and all investigations and funding those investigations because Germany is a strong uh, um, is a is a is a major power with a, uh, with good uh, with uh, efficient funds, and um, the Germ the German government is ready to ready to. Um, uh, is ready to fund any and all investigations that will uh, help get closer to the root cause, and uh, replying to the uh, replying to the um, point made by the delegate of Czech Republic, the Czech Republic has again stated that the German uh, that the German governments and the French governments are uh, are continually telling uh, are uh, forcing European Union countries to uh, take refugees in, and this is creating a national threat. However, the German government would like to remind the Czech Republic. Uh, Delegate that on humanitarian grounds, people who are distressed and dislocated require a new home, and Germany is always ready to foster these people. Thank you. Delegates, please lower your placards when speaker when someone's talking. Yes. Point of personal privilege. The delegate is inaudible. Please turn on the mic. Uh, the delegation which spoke before the delegation of Germany stated that the uh, people who entered the country posing to be Afghani uh, refugees were actually Afghani terrorists. Has this been confirmed by the Secretary General? Apologies, Delegate. Um, can you, could you please repeat that? Uh, were the Afghani uh, refugees who came into the country posing as refugees Afghani terrorists? Because this was stated by the re uh, by the delegate that spoke before the yes delegate that was part of the update. All right, thank you. So, De delegate of Afghanistan. As stated earlier, 
uh, the delegate of Afghanistan believes that uh, those individuals or groups that resorted to violence are not acquainted with the country and uh, uh, I w uh, would like to, uh, the delegate of Afghanistan would like to uh, confirm if the Afghan refugees were uh, investig, if the government of Italy could further investigate the situation. Italy. Um, to the delegate of Afghanistan, uh, it becomes affirmative that the delegate of, uh, that Italy will be uh, obligated uh, and it will definitely investigate but it would also like Afghanistan to send a team of investigators as the people who were uh, held accountable for the bombing were Afghan refugees. This is an obligation on the Afghan side as well to help contribute to finding solutions. Uh, Italy would also like to make three other statements if that is uh, allowed by the Honorable Secretary General. Yes, Delegate, please uh, go ahead. The Delegate of Italy would like to thank the Delegate of Russia for voicing their concerns and it will affirm that screening will be uh, much better scrutinized and more secure. Uh, it will request all countries also to impose a curfew, at least in Europe, as uh, the possibility uh, keeps growing uh, that this might be a chain of terror attacks. We do want to minimize the number of deaths possible. Therefore, currently, imposing a curfew, at least in Europe, seems like the best way to reduce the number of deaths. We need to prevent the number of deaths, and we would like to call upon all the nations to impose a curfew until further fines are made. Thank you. Delegate of Egypt. The Delegate of Egypt would like to remind the Delegate of Italy that imposing a curfew on an entire continent is unparalleled in history and it's a completely unrealistic expectation for governments to impose. The idea that curfews will save lives in the first place over such a large, a large populace is quite childish to think and uh, actually might uh, only increase panic among, uh, among <laughs> citizens across Europe. So delegate of Egypt would ask delegate of Italy to reconsider such an uh, option. Delegate of India. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I do concur, uh, the delegate of India does concur with the delegate of Czech Republic. There are loopholes in the system, but that is not priority now. Number one priority is safety of refugees. Due to the recent attack, attacks on refugees may increase. So I plead with the European nations to ensure the legitimate refugees are taken care of and their rights not violated. Number two, safety of the citizens of your own country. I would request a uh, majority of delegate, the European- Delegate, please. Uh, the delegate of, apologies. Pronouns. The delegate of India would request the delegates of uh, the various European nations to increase their security level to high alert. Uh, number three. As stated, there are many more so-called refugees who pose as uh, the so-called terrorists who pose as refugees. So I call for an immediate crackdown on them with the help of an independent UN agency. Thank you. Delegate of Syria. Um, thank you for all the contributions put forth by the um, nations here today. To begin by stating the fact that the update clearly Delegates, states. Delegates, we have a third update. The Hungarian police has successfully captured the bombers of the Eiffel Tower incident. Okay. They, they are identified as Syrian and Iranian nationals working as a part of the same insurgent organization that the Ita Italian authorities had reported earlier. The French police has also received information that this insurgent organization is using Indian channels to receive training. Eritrean nationals have been detained in Buenos Aires, Argentina, because they were charged for possessing weapons and other armed goods. This raises concerns because the area is the venue for hosting G20 meeting of finance ministers and central bank governors on March 19th and 20th. Argentinian authorities on interrogating these Eritrean nationals have found that they have also received training through Indian channels. Please proceed. Delegate of Hungary, you've been recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the Delegate of Hungary is thankful for uh, finally finding who has done uh, this crisis. And uh, to add to that, um, for the delegates that have questioned refugees for committing such attack. At the beginning of this crisis, Greece said it was not possible to rule out the presence of terrorists among these masses of migrants. So the possibility of migrants committing such 
uh, situations is possible. Delegate of Eritrea. Uh, thank you, Chair. The delegate from Eritrea would just say that um, Eritrea is ready to give uh, clear and honest information, if is it needed, to find the um, uh, to, to help uh, finding uh, the the responsibles and not the uh, organization responsible for this, um, and also it will um, uh, enhance the co controls in in the borders to to avoid the possibility in the future that uh, terrorists uh, go out of Eritrea. Thank you, Delegate. Delegate of Cambodia. Just because some Afghani uh, refugees, I don't know, became terrorists or something, doesn't mean that all refugees are actually terrorists. So no country or delegate should accuse te refugees of being terrorists in any way. In face of this matter, it is high time that India starts securing their borders uh, rather than first suggesting other countries to, whereas France has, um, is uh, will agree to any such um, refugee checks or security checks that is needed in the country. Also, France would like to remember Czech uh, remind Czech Republic that uh, while saying no to terrorists, uh, no to refugees who might be terrorists, uh, Czech Republic has to remember that more than 60% of the refugees are unaccompanied, unaccompanied children, and refusing them, yeah, that's a humanitarian crisis. Delegate, we would appreciate if the crisis would, was addressed first. Delegate of Iran, it has been mentioned that Iranian nationals have been reported to be working as a part, as a part of the insurgent organization. Would you like to comment? Uh, so uh, the delegate of Iran would agree with the delegate of uh, Czech Republic that the root cause was uh, uh, the inefficient system of distribution of refugees. The attack by the Afghanis and Iranians was solely because of the unsatisfactory refugee system. In order to prevent future instances of this kind, we need to bring about reforms in the current system. This does not, however, justify the act of the Iranian, uh, Iranian refugees, but it does raise an important question regarding the inefficient uh, distribution system of refugees. Delegate of Argentina. Um, first of all, I would like to. Um, uh, please refrain from using. First yeah, the delegate of Argentina would like to congr congratulate the government on catching the terrorists before doing anything. That is a real event happening right now, as a lot of other countries can do that. Uh, this has been uh, mainly because of uh, we had uh, unfortunately an experience with terrorism in AIMA accident in 1997, and uh, as uh, a role. Uh, as a global role from Argentina and uh, drives from humanity. We would like to offer uh, police officers and investigators to be uh, sent to any country in need so they can protect their interior. Delegate of Afghanistan. Uh, some of the military training institutions in India, uh, like Indian Military Academy, accept foreign citizens uh, to achieve training in the institution. Does the delegate have any comment on this? Delegate of India, would you like to comment? Be rephrased. Delegate, please rephrase your question. Some of the military institution, training institutions uh, in India, like the Indian Military Academy, accept foreign citizens to achieve training in the institution. Does the delegate have any com comment on this? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, delegate. Uh, if the delegate is insinuating that these, cha these government channels have been used for these terrorist attacks, we, the government, can assure you it has not been. We only train these foreign nationals after permission from their respective government has been obtained. With that being said, uh, thank you, uh, Delegate of France, for your advice, I think, but I think the Delegate of India can speak for themselves. And furthermore, the Delegate of France uh, was insinuating that India should secure its borders before advising others to. Let me state this was an mm. advice before the third update had come out. With that being said, we are deeply saddened and concerned about the fact that Indian channels have been used. We will be monitoring any 
uh, local and any state military programs from now on. And we will further be monitoring any flights out of, the, out of India to these concerned regions to ensure uh, this doesn't happen again. Thank you. Syria. Okay, sorry, delegates, we're moving to an unmoderated caucus for draft resolution uh, making right now. And we'd appreciate it if we have uh, two blocks. Thank you, delegates. Delegates, before we have to set the time for the unmoderated caucus, time of 15 minutes. Honorable chairs, uh, as a point of personal privilege, uh, I, this dele the dele delegate of Japan would like to request that both blocks be separated on either side of this room to, to maintain the decorum. Uh, that will be in order. Delegates, the time for this unmoderated caucus has expired. Please return to your seats and submit your draft resolutions to the dais. Delegate, please, delegates, please return to your seats first. No, they have a laptop. Delegates, we have not, we have yet not received any draft resolution. We, delegates, we've received just one draft resolution. Can we, guys, please return to your seats, delegates. Delegates, please return to your seats. Maintain decorum. We have not, re we have received only one draft resolution. Yeah, it's. A, it's a <laughs> Delegates, please maintain decorum. And please refrain from cross-talking, Delegate of France. Are there any motions on the floor? Yeah. Delegate of Syria? The Delegate of Syria um, Delegates, your motion. attention, please. Please join us in welcoming our esteemed dignitaries who have arrived in our midst. We have the pleasure of having with us Ms. Rosalia Artiaga, former president and vice president of Ecuador, Ms. Stefania Giannini, former Minister of Education, Universities and Research, Italy. Over to the chair. Can the delegate of Japan state their sponsors for their draft resolution? The, delega uh, the delegate of Finland and the delegate of Zimbabwe. Delegates? Are and the Czech Republic, sorry, apologies. Delegates, are there any motions on the floor? Delegate of Syria. Um, the delegate of Syria would like to raise a motion to open a moderated caucus to discuss the uh, resolutions on the table. That is in order, and it passes by the chair's discretion since we are in an emergency crisis. All right, uh, delegates, we'll be now uh, discussing uh, draft one. Author is India, sponsored by USA, Syria, Italy, and France. Signatories being China, Russia, UAE, and UK. We would like, uh, we would like to invite uh, two sponsors and the author of the draft to please come forward and discuss their draft resolution. Delegate. No, delegate. We will just have the discussion of the resolution. Please go ahead. Uh, delegates, please note that you have five minutes to present your resolution. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time of chaos, we have developed a very comprehensive draft resolution that addresses the main three, uh, the main three concerns, safety of refugees, safety of citizens, and vetting procedures. Uh, I will now proceed to move on to uh, reading my cooperative clauses. Uh, clause number one, we call upon countries whose people have seen casu uh, casualties or have experienced loss to provide investigative officials in order to ensure objective research. Uh, this is in light of the controversial role of France and other countries. To ensure a very objective and straightforward, uh, straightforward investigation, we call upon each one of your countries which have been affected to send your likely official. Request the UN to conduct an independent investigation of the countries that have suffered casualties and have contributed to these attacks. This is in light of uh, this is in light to get more information and uh, evaluate the correct uh, the correct uh, reasons as to why the attacks happened. Moving on with the resolution, we further invite all member nations to continue to implement strict vetting and screening processes so that the status of refugees is only granted to the deserving refugees. While we have constantly discussed the fact that illegal immigration is uh, a crucial aspect of why terrorist attacks are taking place, and therefore to eliminate having um, eliminate terrorists upholding the audacity to attack nations or host in different nations will be eradicated. Um, positively by implementing this resolution. And therefore, we urge all nations to vote for this resolution and pass this for the crisis. So ladies and gentlemen, to reiterate, we have the vetting procedure that many of the countries called for. We still ensure that the refugees are taken care of. We know they need a home, and we are still able to provide a home for them. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we present our resolution. Thank you, delegates. Uh, since we are discussing the draft resolution, you will have to answer points of information. Are there any on the floor? Please raise your placards now. Also, delegates, before we proceed, uh, the author is not India, it's Germany. It's just been changed. Thank you. Delegate of Egypt, you've been, rec you've been recognized. The delegate would like to question the sponsors of this resolution by asking that the, now this resolution does not provide any comprehensive clauses to deal with the current situation at hand, but rather prevention of further situations. So how does the delegation expect the resolution to tackle the current precarious situation of refugees across Europe and those affected right now in Europe? Uh, we also have a clause which states uh, the, uh, yeah, we also call for nations who are currently in the European Union to uh, raise their security levels to high alert. That wouldn't mean a curfew or closing down of the continent, but increased security. And we believe this will deter any future attacks. My delegate, delegate of Finland, you've been recognized. Does this resolution not have anything, uh, anything to aid the search of the 15 missing people? The resolution's second operative clause says that an independent investigation of the countries that have suffered casualties will take place, and um, this investigation will throw light on all the uh, on the minute details and will completely clarify all doubts relating to the uh, relating to the incident. Furthermore, because we realize that the uh, investigation that is being conducted needs to be. Uh, reliable, we call upon nations to send official investigators from their own countries to ensure that there is no chance of manipulation within the investigation that is being carried out. Uh, furthermore, this also increases reliability so as to uh, minimize the chance of any further questions being posed from member states. Uh, with that being said, to continue search and, uh, search and rescue efforts, we do strongly support that with uh, financial help, if required, coming from countries who are willing to donate. Um, delegates, is the block open to a question from the dais? Absolutely. So the crisis states that there will be a G20 summit in Argentina where a few insurgents have been uh, found in two days, that is in March, on, on March 19th and 20th. So how does the resolution plan on tackling that? Uh, like I've said before, uh, even though there isn't a specific clause stating uh, the G20 issue, we have called for the raising of the high alert security. That would in turn mean uh, definitely an increased security in all countries. 
which would in turn deter attacks. Thank you, delegates. You may return to your Thank seat. you, Chair. Thank you, committee. Um, was there a de delegate who raised a point of order? Yes, delegate of Egypt. The delegate believes that the delegate of uh, India had earlier stated that the uh, right, raising of security level was for Europe specifically, and therefore that does not include Argentina, so the delegate would request a clarification on that matter. All right, thank you, delegate. Delegate of India, please clarify through notes. Also, um, delegates, we will not be accepting amendments for the emergency crisis because uh, um, we will only be accepting I mean, we will only be accepting draft resolutions and all countries were, uh, were allowed to make the draft resolution during the unmoderated caucus. Now we have the second unmoderated caucus. I mean, uh, sorry, I mean, apologies. Now we have the second uh, draft resolution that is sponsor, author countries, Japan, sponsors, Finland, Zimbabwe, and Czech Republic. Uh, please approach the podium. So, fine. Clause one, increase the active participation and collaboration of all states and international and regional organizations to impede, impair, isolate, and incap incapacitate the, uh, the terrorist threat. Clause two, secure borders, of, secure borders of member states with more armed personnel. Member nation, uh, yeah, then member nations should uh, clause uh, clause three. Member nations should collaborate to jointly investigate the jointly in investigate the unknown syndicate group, which is operating. Uh, wait, join, jointly investigate the syndicate group, as it seems to be an international uh, group. We must work together internationally to co to investigate this group. Clause four, put emergency services on high alert, including polices, police and hospitals. Clause five, urge tourism agencies to temporarily suspend any excursions to countries affected, uh, that are affected. Clause six, six, temporarily halt the influx of refugees into the union. And clause seven, joint international investigations should be held in order for um, um, a larger and much more advantageous situation to be achieved. Clause 9 authorizes the reformation of the refugee quota system uh, and clause 10 stricter vetting of the refugees to distinguish between those of legitimacy and those of um, terrorist threat. Um, obviously, these last two points are more to actually um, prevent any more actual uh, terrorist attacks, especially with the fact with the, the way this crisis has occurred. This is a chain reaction that has been seen from this syndicate group. This resolution has mentioned in many different aspects, such as putting forward investigations that are very thorough in order to find out these, um, these criminals that have participated in this crisis. And this investigation has also put forward a solution to the fact that there are missing people, which creates a hostage situation while also creating a terrorist situation, which many delegates have unfortunately failed to recognize. It has a clause that goes, encourages the active participation and collaboration of all state and international and regional organizations to impede, impair, isolate, and incap incapacitate the terrorist threat. This encourages the entire committee to come into one hand and help in aiding in closing this crisis. Okay, we may, we may move forward. We yield the time to questions. All right, delegate. Are there any points of information for the delegate of Iran? You've been recognized. Okay, so uh, the delegate mentioned that it covers all aspects, but uh, what compensation does this resolution provide to the uh, people who have been affected by the deaths during the bombings? Um, could you rephrase the questions? Oh, wait. 
Delegate, you're supposed to raise, raise a point of personal privilege. Point of personal privilege? Point of personal privilege? Yes, Delegate. Could the question be rephrased? What? Delegate of Iran, please rephrase the question. Okay, so the, the, uh, the, uh, the sponsors mentioned that uh, this resolution covers all aspects. However, what compensation does this resolution provide to the families that have been affected by the deaths during the bombings? Every delegate on this, uh, on this block does give away its condolences to the families and will, be, will try its best to provide funds. However, as, as a sponsor, which is Zimbabwe, cannot, cannot offer its monetary funds, other countries on the block can. Delegate of Sweden, you've been recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair. The Delegate of Sweden would like to ask the Delegate of Japan what program do he, does he have to prevent uh, the, group, the terrorist groups coming into these states? Because, uh, yes, you can have uh, controls, but what program uh, does he have specifically? Uh, specifically? Thank you. Plus four states that, uh, the, that to, to be put emergency services on high alert, including police and hospitals. And class nine states that stricter vetting of the refugees to distinguish between those of legi leg legitimacy and those of facade. Also, Japan is a member of one of the G7 nations who are um, one of the uh, members of the largest economies, thus being able to provide uh, large amounts of financial aid as, long a as well as um, non-combatant military officers in order to combat the rising threat of um, terrorism worldwide. Thank you. Delegate of France, you've been recognized. Um, this draft resolution says that influx of refugees into the Union has to be stopped for a while. Um, does the delegate realize that when Sweden did the same, it caused a Stockholm attack? So while we're trying to prevent a terrorist attack, we just it's not really happening in this draft resolution because Stockholm attack was done by a refugee that uh, was denied access into the country. Delegates, please know that clapping is not in order. Thank you. Um, on the case of the Stockholm attack, the, the delegates of this block firmly believe that this is um, a highly circumstantial, that it's a very special case that still does not, that does not outweigh the actual security benefits that will actually be provided from actually halting the influx of refugees, especially with the fact that there's still loopholes, as already admitted by this whole committee, within the European Commission's um, refugee uh, influx system. Um, these loopholes need to be uh, addressed first in, uh, before actually having these refugees be admitted again because there, there is no, there is a high risk that these tragedies will happen again and the, the bloc firmly believes that national security should be protected. For, um, I'm coming. Um, the delegate of Finland adds on. Furthermore, since we expect since we expect uh, more uh, since we expect more attack uh, um, attacks, we have placed this, uh, our resolution places the police and hospitals and all emergency services on high alert, so as to respond quickly and neutralize the threats before they rise. Is the block open to any question from the dais? Yes. Any and all. Um, Considering the fact, again, considering the fact that the G20 meeting is occurring and considering the fact that this issue has started with coordinated attacks in Europe and now is spreading to Argentina and uh, over the world, what, what the bloc has not, uh, the bloc has vaguely stated that they would increase security forces, but they did not state any strict measures that would be followed so that, uh, so that the existing uh, organization that has uh, found its places in different, uh, different parts of the world can be purged out. What, what is the views of the block on this issue? There, there are a few, uh, there are multiple ways in which uh, this block uh, addresses those issues. Uh, the primary issue, uh, the first issue of the, G, uh, the G7 summit, the security of the summit, uh, sorry, the, the G, apologies, the G20 summit, uh, the emergency services are put into high alert. That's the first thing. To pr second thing, as for, Second thing, yes, to prevent, for, uh, to prevent further attacks on the international scale, all, all member nations um, are all member nations are requested to uh, increase the border, increase the border controls, so, 
increase the border, con border control and protection. Furthermore, cla cla uh, clause one of the resolution encourages the active participation and collaboration of states, all international and regional. We encourage international collaboration so that, so that when com com combating this international threat, can, we, can, we can work international, we, we can collaborate with other countries so as to gain information from each other and combat the threat. Right. Thank you, delegates. You may return to your seat. Delegates, the time for this moderated caucus has elapsed. Are there any motions on the floor? Yes, Delegate of India. Motion to move into voting procedures for the about two resolutions. That is in order. Um, due to the chair's uh, discretion, this motion will pass. All those in favor for draft resolution one submitted by Point of order? Yes, delegates. Are the delegates vote. requested to only vote on one resolution? Yes, delegates. Please note that you will only be vote, uh, able to vote for one resolution. Um, all those in favor for draft resolution one submitted by the de uh, delegate of Germany, please raise your placards now. Please lower your placards. All those in favor for the for draft resolution two submitted by the delegate of the delegation of Japan, please raise your placards now. By a clear majority, the draft resolution submitted by the delegation of Japan passes. Clapping is now in order. <laughs> apologies, apologies. Um, apologies, delegates, the draft resolution submitted by the delegation of Germany. Delegates, we, are, we will now move back to the uh, topic which was formally discussed. That is the denial of right to education. And we will continue with the moderated caucus. Are there any motions on the floor? Delegate of Zimbabwe. Motion to open an, uh, a moderated caucus. Of total time? 20 minutes. That is in order. All those in favor? This motion clearly passes. Yes, Delegate of Zimbabwe. Um, the Delegate of Germany, uh, apologies. Germany has mentioned and has recently stated that they believe that education is a right more than it is a privilege. Does Germany believe that this is a realistic standard that should be applied to every country and has not had any negative side effects yet? Um, point of person privilege? Yes, Can the Delegate please rephrase this question? Delegate of Zimbabwe, please be more concise and rephrase the question. In a recent occasion, Germany has stated that education is a right more than it is a privilege. Have there been any, any negative side effects to this model? And if there aren't, does Germany suggest this model to many other nations? Yes, Delegate of Germany. The Delegate of Germany would like to say that uh, stating the right to education as more of a privilege, uh, sorry, uh, the stating that education is more of a right than a privilege is uh, affirms that education is the most important thing, that uh, is the most fundamental thing and important thing that should be given to every citizen of a country. It states the, uh, it, 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 um, it highlights the priority that education should be given in each and every country and thus Germany does believe affirm, uh, affirmatively that all countries should um, 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 should treat education as a right rather than a privilege, and that would create a greater impact on education as a, as a global issue. Yes, Delegate of Zimbabwe. Germany provides free education to all, um, whether the person is from the German nationality or not as international students. Does Germany believe that this is applicable to all nations and does not have negative side effects? Yes, Delegate of Germany. The German government has always prioritized education, and thus the move to make education free had come uh, ha, uh, is is uh, enforced by is enforced by the German uh, government. However, the Jom the German government believes that it is not uh, the it is not uh, uh, Germany's place to comment on the education systems of other countries. However, it would say that making education free for all um, uh, for all citizens would make uh, would make ed education more accessible by all citizens and would ra and uh, in turn would enhance 
the levels of literacy in um, in countries worldwide. Thus, Germany does uh, Germany does um, say that it uh, that making education free could enhance education. Uh, delegate of Italy. Um, the delegate of Italy would like to uh, appreciate the comments of the delegate of Germany first of all, as they strongly resonate with the feelings of Italy. Secondly, it would like to um, say that education should and will be a right instead of a privilege because one, talent is not distributed on the basis of who can afford an education and who cannot. And this means that somebody who is not literate could be uh, doing a much better job even here than us. They could be doing a much better job if they had an opportunity. We had the op opportunity to come here and prove ourselves as delegates. Uh, and someone else could do it better if they had been given the same chance. Uh, this world is something that needs efficiency at any job. And someone who has not been given that chance could be more efficient than everybody in this room if they are given that chance, which is why everyone should and everyone does deserve an education, no matter what race, creed, caste, or gender they are. Thank you. Yes, Delegate of Saudi Arabia, you've been recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair. In India, a majority of the population is youth, yet countless children are poverty-stricken and do odd jobs throughout the day. The, these children do not receive the education they require. What does the delegate of India have to talk about this? As delegate of India. Uh, thank you, Chair. This is indeed a very saddening fact. People struck by poverty not receiving access to education but for that, we've had various programs. The Beti Bachao, Beti Padao campaign. That uh, specifically helps the girls uh, whose parents are that educated, whose parents are poverty struck in, to actually send them to school. And mind you, uh, the education for these poverty struck in people are free. We have another scheme, the, uh, the midday meal scheme. So uh, for poverty struck in uh, people, meals are very scarce. So the government has proposed an idea where we feed them at school to increase enrollment in schools. And as a matter of fact, our GRE, our gross enrollment rate of primary schools has reached an astounding 111%. So I believe we are making a good progress towards eradicating the, uh, the lack of education in the poverty struck in people. I hope that answers your question. Delegate of Mexico, you've been recognized. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this question is to the Delegate of Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia poses a gender-specific education policy that emphasizes women's domestic function. Does this, pro does this not promote gender inequality, especially in a country where women account for only 4% of the total workforce in Saudi Arabia? Yes, Delegate of Saudi Arabia. Uh, the delegate of Saudi Arabia admits the fact that in the past, uh, women have been given less priorities, but we are undergoing a uh, socioeconomic revolu revolution, and we have been making more changes to that. The number of universities in Saudi Arabia for women is much, much more than women, much, much more than men, and there are 17 universities for women, women whereas there are only nine universities for men. This is, imp this is showing the fact that women are given more importance for the higher education than men. And also, in the secondary level, in the primary and secondary level, level education, the women and men alike are given equal importance. Does that satisfy the yes. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Delegate of United States of America. The Delegate of United States of America would like to begin by stating that the fact that Saudi Arabia has 17 universities for females while they have nine universities for men, men is not something to be celebrated. There should be equal opportunities. Furthermore, the fact that there are 17 universities for women where they can receive an education, however, are not allowed to work without male supervision later on is a shame. And the KSA also questioned India on how uh, and why they had students that were outside working in the daytime instead of going to school and why they were participating in odd jobs. However, the United States of America would like to remind all the countries sitting here that we live in a country that faces a constant economic problem and there are scarce resources, which is why we are here today to talk about how we can make education available for every single uh, child. So instead of pointing fingers, it would be more suitable if you try to discuss resolutions 
or if you try to discuss solutions that could later on be implemented into uh, resolutions. Well stated, Delegate. Delegate of Ghana, you've been recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, getting education is the right of every child, no matter if they are refugee or not. But Iranian government policies require Afghan refugees to pay school fees and show residency documents to be admitted to school. However, United, State, uh, United States Refugee Agency states that there are 1.5 to 2 million undocumented Afghans in Iran. So how can the Iranian government ensure the educational rights of all those Afghan refugees in Iran? Delegate of Iran. Uh, the de uh, the delegate for Iran would uh, like to uh, specify the fact that these uh, that these Afghan if Afghans have come had come uh, in the 1979 during the war, and since for the past four decades we have maintained them here, and still currently we uh, we still contain one million Afghani uh, refugees. So we have been educating them, and there has been no problems, and it is they are certainly better off than they were in Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen. We have the honor of, ha of having with us today other two distinguished and esteemed dignitaries, Ms. Najat Walad Belkisem, former Minister of Education, Higher Education and Research France, and Mr. Steve Mihare, former Minister of Education, New Zealand. We now request our esteemed dignitaries to address the gathering and share their valuable insights with us. Can we have microphones arranged for the distinguished guests? Okay, uh, thank you very much. I am uh, Rosalia Arteaga, former uh, uh, Minister of Education of Ecuador and former Vice President and President of the Republic. I um, really appreciate the opportunity to be with all of you. I love to work with uh, young people. And um, I have to tell you that I uh, can hear some very interesting points on, that you put on. A special uh, congratulations for the general secretary. That is, she is making a very good job. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, I also have to congratulate the delegates that I have heard with their positions, defending the positions of the different country that uh, you are representing. Uh, on my experience, I, I have to tell you that um, I started my life being a teacher in a high school when I was, when I was 17 years old. Uh, probably some of you are uh, of the same age. And uh, I had also the opportunity in Ecuador to organize a simulation like this, uh, but not about the United Nations, but the organization of American states. That is a uh, regional organization all, of the, uh, all over the Americas. And it was excellent because uh, uh, teenagers and young people learn how to develop procedures to respect the others, uh, thoughts uh, and uh, to, to make an effort to explain the arguments that you have. Uh, I also want to share with you another experience. When I was uh, in 2004 to 2007, general secretary of another organization, the organization of the Amazon Basin that has to deal with the eight countries of the, of the Amazon, uh, the headquarters are in Brazil, uh, I had an experience that I want to share with you. We organized uh, a trip by boat through the Amazon for a month with uh, teenagers from uh, 16 to 18. Because it's very interesting how we can develop uh, ownership, uh, knowledge, uh, because you cannot uh, love what you don't know. It's very important. Uh, you can love when you know about the reality, what's happening on the area, what are the goals, what are the uh, uh, points that has to be improved. Um, then I, I agree with uh, what we are doing here, talking about education. Education is the most important thing that we can provide for our people in any part of the earth. 
uh, it is a right. Uh, as you told, uh, talk uh, before, it's a right. And uh, everybody, every human being has to achieve all the goals uh, through education. I think it's uh, one thing that I want to share with you. Thank you very much. Akio Tato, which is uh, greetings in um, our indigenous language in New Zealand, which is Maori language. Uh, greetings to you all. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words to you. First of all, can I join my colleague in saying, I think I speak for both of us, when we say that we are in absolute awe when we come and sit and listen to you. Uh, you have uh, a level of skill that I think we would say we, we are admiring of and uh, a little, little um, jealous of that you have so much skill at this, this age. Both of us went into politics quite early in the sense that, probably like you, we were at school thinking about the things that we cared a great deal about. And I think if there's one thing that drives people into public life and into politics, it is, in fact it should be, that you care deeply about something. And that's what brings you here. That it gets, it's the kind of thing that motivates you, gets you out of bed in the morning, that you can't stop thinking about, that you want to see change. That's what drives you into public life and into politics, because you want to be the person who can't do it on their own, that's why you go into public life, to be part of everything that's able to be happening. But you want to see that kind of change. And I get the feeling from just listening to the level of passion that you have brought to this debate here, that that's the kind of people you are. That's how I got started in politics. I started in environmental movements, anti-war movements in my home country. And over time I said to myself, I'm a little bit tired of throwing myself at the police. Perhaps I should go into something where I make real change. And so I stood for Parliament and I went into politics when I was 37 years old. One of the things that I think is important that was brought up in fact by the young people who talked in the main session today is that when you go into politics it's good to go in with a lot of experiences. That you have the skills that you need to be able to do the job well. And I thought they made a very good point today and that is that young people can accelerate their leadership skills by doing things like this. It's a fantastic thing you were doing here. So that when you do enter politics, you are able to say, this is what I stand for, but I know I can actually do something about it. I have the skills to speak, to write, to bring policy to bear. I know about the law and how my country runs. I can actually do this job. And you are, you are doing things at an age that really I was not, and I'm sure many of my colleagues in the parliamentary group here were not. So you are accelerating that growth and you will bring all that skill to bear when you go in to Parliament. When you get there, you'll find it's, it's slightly different in many ways to what you'd hoped for. It can be slow, it can be frustrating, it can sometimes make you feel that there must be something else you could do with your life that's better than this. But there wouldn't be many politicians who would say to you that they regretted the time that they were in politics. Because when you get there, every single day you get up, you know you can make a difference. You can make change. It's the most exhilarating feeling to feel that you are going to contribute to people having a better life. That optimism, that idealism that I sense all of you have got will get you into politics. The skills you're learning will equip you to do the job. But when you get there, stay there. Stay there for the long term so that you can really see through the changes that you believe in. We are in a very, very difficult world right now. But I have to say, looking at all of you, I feel pretty optimistic about the fact that something good is going to come this century. Go for it. Honourable delegates, it's a great honour for me to be here at this uh, United Nations Simulation Conference. Uh, you dealt with some crucial issues about education, not only like this, uh, this topic. Uh, you talked about uh, quality and inclusive education. You talked about education as a human right, more than a privilege, as German delegation uh, underlines so well. And you talk about refugees crisis in Europe. Well, I, I found a red line in your, in your discussion, your debate. I want to share with you my point of view. 
And this red line I try to, try to summarize as it follows. I think that um, the responsibility we have in our hands now in these troubled times all over the world as politicians, as professors, I'm a university professor too, and uh, as teachers, uh, but also students, is try to affirm so clearly the new mission of democracy in this current millennium. And the new mission, in my opinion, is to uh, give everybody the right to be different. You know, it seems almost obvious, but there is a, a long and a, a very hard work to do that, because uh, giving everybody la, the right to be different means uh, uh, giving the power uh, of expressing uh, his her, uh, own identity, uh, culture, language, and uh, beliefs. And I think, the, I think that education is the key factor to do something like this. Uh, I, I'm going to, to refer very, very briefly to my experience as uh, before uh, coming into politics, I was rector of an international university in the sector of higher education, and later as a minister of education universities research in Italy. Well, we try to uh, reform structurally uh, the Italian school system. Uh, we found uh, some uh, conservative resistance, I must admit, because uh, when you introduce some strong innovation, it's, uh, it's natural that uh, somebody can say, oh, please, uh, pay attention, because we are changing something so important, so crucial for, uh, not simply for developing a better society, but also for changing uh, uh, human beings' mind. And, uh, uh, their beliefs, their, their way to approach uh, their lives. Uh, I can summarize uh, in one word uh, the trial we, 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 we ran as government and as minister, me, myself. This word is open. I think that opening the school and uh, putting in, inside the classroom uh, all the contest with the is outside of the room, the question of integration in multicultural societies. My country has a strong and very fast process of migration, you know, and this is a very important issue in that people sometimes don't understand how can we manage this process, and school is the right place to approach in a right way this, this factor. And secondly, try to open means, uh, open the school to society means uh, to create a link between uh, what you teach, what we teach, when you learn in the class and when you find outside. So a uh, dual skill, school to work, this is the innovation we introduced in Italy because we didn't have uh, a, um, a scheme like this. But maybe the most important thing, uh, the most ambitious challenge we have, uh, the most difficult thing we have to do, and we try to do also in my case, uh, is try to rethink the way we teach and the way you learn. Because you know, uh, we have now a digital uh, context around, uh, all around the world in different countries. Uh, everybody has something just like this and you can connect, you can invent, you can innovate uh, uh, in so different ways. But uh, at the same time, we must consider that this is the most important innovation we have to, to, to introduce in every uh, national school system. But at the same time, this is my opinion, this is my point of view, we are sure that computers will be always smarter than human beings. So which is the difference, which is the future we have to put in our programs, in our way of teaching, and in our, in your way of learning? It's something which is uh, so typical for person, for human beings, believing independent thinking and uh, soft skills. What is, it's, it's the difference between smart and wise. And in my opinion, a school education system must uh, introduce wisdom more than a smart in, the, in, the, in, the, in our society. So we try to do something like this. We try to create an open school, more open than it was in the past. And uh, I think this, this is the right way to go. And I think that also the issues you touched around this table have to do with this uh, so ambitious program, and so ambitious objective, not simply in politics, but also in the education.
great opportunity for us to learn from the past and practical experiences of all our special guests. We'll now get started with the question and answer sessions. The first question is for Ms. Rosalia Artiaga from Vania Sultana. Uh, to Honorable Ma'am Rosalia Ortega, as a woman achieving something takes more hard work and effort to put in than men. So, Ma'am, how was it how is it coming to power in your country, and what do you consider as your major achievement in the field of education? Not easy for a woman, <laughs> uh, because uh, you know that uh, during the long time, women doesn't have the same rights that that men. Even in my case, uh, when I arrived to the presidency of the republic, uh, I suffered a coup d'etat by the um, parliament. And the only reason is uh, because I was a woman. Now, nowadays, things are changing for good, I think. And uh, it's a big challenge um, that has to be reached uh, uh, with education. Uh, I, I hear some of you talking very enthusiastic about uh, the goals and the role of education and the importance uh, to have uh, the possibility, as uh, my colleague from Italy says, to be diverse, to, to have the opportunity to, to demonstrate our own values, our own uh, dreams. Uh, the, the thing that I want to share with you also is that all of us, we have to be dreamers. We have to be dreamers and to follow our dreams uh, from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, it could be something that uh, could uh, be considered utopical, but at the end of the day, uh, what we want for all of us, we want to be happy. That's a big uh, dream. And uh, how we achieve the happiness is very personal, because happiness is very different for everybody of us. Then being dreamers, working to make the dreams of the others also uh, be in uh, practical efforts uh, is one thing that uh, we can uh, share and uh, we can work for it. Um, the experience to be in, in power, uh, as I told you, is uh, something that, uh, uh, in my case, I personally decide because I want not only to be an observer, I want to be on the field, a player, and. Um, uh, in my time, because uh, I, I was in, in position more than 20 years ago, it was not uh, usually that uh, a woman in a country of Latin American uh, could do some kind of things. Uh, I was, uh, for example, the first female minister of education of my country. And I remember that some people on, on, um, on the street say, yeah, you maybe go to the kitchen. And I say, I don't like to cook. I am a really bad on, on kitchen, then I have to be in politics. Uh, but it was like an ironic uh, answer. Uh, and, and I feel that uh, I had the opportunity to open roads for female in my country and in a lot of countries. Because when I talk with, especially with women, but also with young men, they say, uh, yeah, you can be uh, a role model because you fight for being there, you do it in a proper way, no corruption, not uh, agreement under the table, that everything has to be open. And uh, I really call you to follow your dreams and to fight for a better world with the tools of education. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our second question is for Ms. Stefania Giannini by Ivy Ganguly. Can the mic be passed to on? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. My question for you is that, considering your marvelous achievements and great contribution in the field of education and politics, what do you think is the greatest challenge that students, as well as educators, would have to combat in the years to come? Did you visit the laboratory which are outside of this uh, room? There is a 
magic world made of high technology, strong innovations, new competencies you need as students, but I think new competence we need also as teachers or professors, just to understand what's moving around. And I'm not sure that we can predict today, which will be useful in a few years in order to, to find a good job, in order to understand better than we need to do this kind of fast change in world. So, the first challenge is, of course, try to introduce a, a digital paradigm in the, in the schools. And uh, it's important, very concrete, very clear objective. But at the same time, if we want that education still remains what you said, that it is a human right and the key factor which can change people's mind, the key factor we have in our hands to, to bring peace and stability inside a person's uh, heart, as uh, Rosaria told us before. I think that we, we must combine this dimension with the humanistic approach that we have uh, in some countries, in Europe for instance, but in also in other countries of the world. And I think that these values, uh, those values I mentioned before, believing in dependical uh, thinking and that all this humanistic dimension is quite important and the combination of these two dimension will be the right way to change and to rethink the way we teach and the way we learn. Thank you, ma'am. Our final question is for Mr. Steve Nihari by Justin Rafael. Good afternoon to you, sir. Sir, uh, Steve, uh, Sir Steve, you have stated earlier that students may um, accelerate their growth through participating in worthwhile extracurricular activities and leadership tasks, etc. So, do you feel, sir, that standardized testing results and grading systems would still be an effective way to determine the academic success of students in the future? Hello. Very good question, and, and you thought it up uh, while I was talking as well, so on your feet, very good. Uh, just, just to encourage the young woman in the, uh, the room, can I say, I come from a country that has a 37-year-old female Prime Minister. Nearly all the parties are committed to 50% women uh, in their makeup, and uh, the fact we have a woman Prime Minister is that she's the third as well in recent times. So the world is changing, the door is opening. The kind of battles that people like these two have had to do to clear the way it's much clearer, so yeah, don't give up. It's a, it's, a, it's a world waiting for you to be a prime minister somewhere or a president or something like that. No, I don't think the kind of assessment we have is the way that it will lead to better leadership uh, skills for young people. I think in many cases we over-examine over and over-assess young people through the process of asking them to memorise for exams. So teachers in, uh, all over the world are encouraged to teach to the exam teach to the test and to assess all the time. So the time for learning tends to get squashed and the process of learning becomes skewed towards trying to make sure that you are able to pass that exam. So most countries will have at some point in their, their academic career for the young person a point where they pass or fail, whether they get to go to university or not. And so what we end up doing is never really finding out what is the passion, what is the talent of that young person that could then be accelerated, capitalised on, allowed to grow so that they can make the kind of contribution that they might be able to make to their country and to the world. So assessment's essential. Knowing your progress in education is essential. But we need a revolution in the way that we find out what you know and we use that to develop you rather than trying to rank you one against the other, which is the way we do things now. And one of the, once again, I've been to a couple of sessions here through the conference that have been hugely encouraging as people have been talking about how to give you feedback on what you should know and how well you know it so that you can progress as fast as you can through the system rather than just a series of set, standardised barriers. That's a change that's got to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you, honourable guests of honour, for being here with us today. We truly appreciate the priceless wisdom you've spread to us. Over to the chair now. Delegates, um, 
the the dais would look favorably upon a motion to terminate moderated caucus and move into an unmoderated caucus to discuss the draft resolutions. Are there any motions on the floor? Yes, Delegate of India. A motion to adjourn moderated caucus and open an unmoderated caucus for a time period of 20 minutes. That is in order. All those in favor? This motion clearly passes. However, delegates, please note that uh, the time will be revised to 15 minutes uh, due to chair's discretion. You are now in unmoderated caucus.
We request our distinguished judges, Mr. Stephen King and Mr. Rajesh Jekarpai, to share their views on the session with us. It's been a great pleasure to see so many of you again uh, for the second time, seeing how many of you have grown, uh, and to see your development over the past couple of months. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I've had a great time again, and I'm looking forward to seeing the next session tomorrow. I hope they're going to be half as good as you, because then that will be very entertaining as well. I think uh, from today and from last time, what I saw was a couple of people really mature and become more than just people who can learn from a computer screen, but they could digest it and come up with stories and the ability to engage with others to convince them of their point of view. And they managed to do that with, with charm and with, with, with pleasantries that brought people together with a lot of warmth. So I was, I was very pleased with that. Uh, there's a few other people that were very, very, very smart and very, very sharp and made us laugh quite a lot with some of the comments, but perhaps that didn't help you in forming the relationships uh, around the table that were needed to, to carry this forward. So although that it's sometimes necessary to be defensive, perhaps there needs to be a little bit of extra warmth and charm and maybe humor in that uh, to not put people off. So uh, again, I'd say very, very well done. I've had a great time. I think Mr. Regis has also had a great time as well. I'm sure all the audience has too. I'd like to wish you all the very, very best of luck in the next ones that you do. Uh, and encourage you to keep moving onwards uh, and keep pursuing these, these great ideas. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Steve. Uh, this is my first time opportunity here to judge this event. Uh, but at the age of 18, the kind of communication skills and the networking for, uh, things which you have, that has been tremendous. Uh, being from an investment banker, we are almost into every, t every time it was only money concept uh, in our life. But here we have seen um, the next, uh, the digital learning platform where it will emerge in your life. And I, I think that probably <coughs> um, you, you, your generation has taken it next forward. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Now we'd like to invite our principal and headmistress, Gems Arun Indian School, and our chief guest, Ms. Rosalia Artiaga, to kindly come on stage to give away the mementos. We call upon the honorable members of the chair to come forward and receive mementos for their contribution to the UNSC 2018. The Secretary General, Meghna Senthil. Presidents of the General Assembly, Arun Anand and Aisha Kavari. Vice Presidents of the General Assembly, Joel Matthew, Aliza Kidbai, and Vanshika Bharadwaj. We now have the much-awaited results with us. I request our chief guest, Ms. Stefania Giannini, to join our dignitaries on stage.
the second runner-up position for speech in the General Assembly is secured by Parma Abbas, Cambridge International School. The first runner-up position for speech, General Assembly goes to Adam El-Hanawi, yeah. the Winchester School of Jabal Ali. Yeah. 